We return once again to the island map to take on a challenge I've set upon myself. Today we hunt for the perfect Megalania, a huge lizard that resembles the Komodo dragon, a largely shy cave-dwelling creature that hides in the shadowy recesses of many of the caves throughout the various worlds of Ark. It produces a toxin that's needed as a tribute to summon some of Ark's bosses. It is possible to farm this toxin with a breeding pair of Megalania by sacrificing the babies, but I largely want to focus this Easter event dino on something that we can test as a viable cave mount. How well will a Megalania stand up to some of the tougher caves? I want to put it through its paces, seeing how well it sticks to the walls, and testing it out as a viable cave mount. So I've just come over to Carnivore Island. We're going to check out the artifact of the Devourer Cave first. Sometimes you get a couple of them spawn in here. Uh, we're going to check out a few caves. Okay, so the Philo Collio, one of my favourite cave creatures, the Philo. This is a pretty good choice for this cave as well. There's a couple of jumps, but it doesn't matter if you fall to the bottom. The Philo can take quite a lot of fall damage. So the entrance is just at the back here. And if you follow the law of Ark, which I've covered on the channel, then uh, this is the cave that Rockwell refers going into to get the artifact to talk us about spelunking. It's the only one that I can think of that you have to dive under the water. So far, nothing. I'm just going to drag these onyx over towards us here. Just clear some of these out with the shotgun. Well, didn't find anything in this cave this time round, but I'll grab an artifact while we're down here. So no joy in there, but we'll go and check out the artifact of the Hunter Cave next. The sun's going down, so it might be a bit dark when we get there. Truidons. Just see the little creepy eyes poking out in the dark. Hello there. So, still no luck in the Hunter Cave, but I'll grab one of these artifacts. And there is the back chamber that we haven't checked out here. I've come straight down. Let's go and have a look in the other room. Okay, a 145 with a funky pink event color on it. That will do, even though it's got an awful color. <laughs> Look at that pink. Pink and yellow. So, oh, looks like we got two of them. Didn't see this other one. Uh, looks like they're both male. That one's starting to talk around. Ah, there we go. It's out. That one's only a level 15 and it's another male, so we don't need that one. Um, we just need to find ourselves a female. Grab its toxin. You want plenty of narc on these guys, they can wake up quite quick. There we go. Didn't take too long. So, stats wise, health doesn't look great, but melee damage is up there, I guess. And stamina. Maybe we can find something better on a female. That's not a bad start. Now, the other cave that we can go and check out is the Swamp Cave. So I'm going to need to head back to base, grab some scuba gear so we can go in there because the fumes are toxic in there. And we can swing back round into these caves if we don't find anything. Okay, I've left this one till last. We can spin round and could have done the artifact of the Devourer Cave again, but I figured we'd mix it up and check out the Swamp Cave as well, because they do spawn in here sometimes. 
just bought a Megatherium across. But you do need to go in with scuba gear in this one. Let's just pack Goldie away. You can also use a gas mask. I always find that pretty expensive. Megatherium is a pretty good creature to use in this cave because of its bug bonus that it gets, but it's also pretty big in here. There's a, just a couple of places that doesn't quite fit through. Well, it's a 120, but I was just looking for a female of any level and I'll grab it. Sure, if it's an event one, can't tell from here. Let's bring it over this way. It doesn't look like it's got any event colours on it. So, unfortunately, we might be stuck with that horrible pink. <laughs> okay, it's out. Don't want to get leached, that's the problem. Oh, I got leached. <laughs> All for a C4 charge. <sighs> Sometimes this is the greatest loot. Oh, and it got leached again. And others, it's just, you know. Just get rid of these leeches on this fire. Okay. So, we've managed to get ourselves a female, and it did have slightly better health on it. And the male did, so we'll go back to base. In short, when it comes to breeding an arc, our purpose is to combine the best stats that we have in our creatures. In this case, the father has 357 melee damage and 1600 stamina, and our female has the best health at 3360. We're going to breed our dinos together until we have a male and female with both of those stats. How do we do that, I hear you ask? Don't ask questions. I do have a blueprint for a saddle that's got some great armor value that's gonna be an advantage. We're gonna name our Easter Salamander after my latest patron member. Thank you very much, Achilles. May your children also be blessed with the mother's health and the father's melee damage. After a full imprint and some basic leveling, it was finally time to test our epic cave mount out in the lava cave. So Achilles, our fully imprinted, leveled pink salamander. We're going to test you out in the artifact of the massive cave. Some consider this one a hard cave. I must admit that last jump has caught me out here a few times and that is one of the reasons I wanted to test a half decent Megalania out. So the real reason I wanted to bring this Megalania into a cave like this is because it can stick to the walls. And I think even if we drop in the lava here, here we go, oh, we're fine. we've lost our otter. <laughs> I totally forgot we'd lose our otter, but i show you there. Even if we drop in the lava, we've still got time to be able to cling out. Turning radius is terrible. Biting radius is not so great, but fully imprinted Megalania. Hey, I'm actually liking this as a cave dino. This hasn't even got any mutations on it. Let's grab one of these artifacts of the massive. Now, if we come in this way, we would have been a lot better. Okay, so let's just come around this side and I can show you much better that this, in fact, is going to be a really good option. Now, do remember we've got Fjordor up and coming and we've got some lava caves in there so if you're on a proper server that doesn't allow flyers in caves then Megalania is definitely going to be extremely useful in that cave. As you can see if you get mobbed by a lot of onyx you will get knocked back and you always want to bring that lesser antidote in as well because we've got a chance of connect contracting mega rabies here but Hey, doesn't do too bad. This one must be a really high level, this event one. Yeah, 145. I'm pretty satisfied with this as a cave dino. I say we haven't put any mutations on it, but it's, it's definitely stood the test and I think it's an option 
for any of the lava caves, maybe even Ragnarok as well. So the Megalania, definitely a creature to think about. And of course, we do have the upcoming Fjordor map due out very soon in June. And there is a lava cave in there. So you guys, if you're getting ready and you're packing your bags and getting ready to set sail on them Viking oceans, perhaps think about bringing a Megalania, especially for that particular cave. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see you.